Hi everybody. I wanted to make a tutorial focusing on color correction of GoPro snorkeling videos. I'll be showing you the process I used in GoPro Studio to improve the snorkeling footage I shot. If you spend a little bit of time color correcting each clip, it will make a big difference in your videos. Let me warn you, I am no expert at color correction. To be honest, I was pretty intimidated to attempt color correction when I first started. I'm more of a left brain person and have a hard time looking at color wheels and adjusting mid-tones and all these other options some video editing software gives you. The good news is I found it pretty simple on GoPro Studio to make the color correction and it made a big difference in my videos. Before I get into the actual GoPro software, let me talk about a couple other items. One thing you may think about before your trip is whether or not you should get a filter. What I found is that I did not need a filter for my snorkeling videos. And I even did a fair amount of diving to maybe say 20 feet and uh, still found that I didn't need it. Uh, but don't let me be the judge of that um, as to whether or not you need it. Uh, what I recommend doing is what I did, which is look at YouTube videos of the place you're going, specifically snorkeling videos, and send messages to those folks and ask whether or not they used the filter or didn't. And if their video footage came out okay, then you may be okay to not use a filter. If you do consider a filter, um, I would not recommend getting a red one because red is used for deeper water. They have uh, what's called shallow water filters, and I've never used them, but uh, that is something that I considered until I made the decision that I was just going to go without one. The second thing I'll just mention is on the video editing software to choose. Um, I generally use Sony Movie Studio and uh, prefer that for a number of things, um, but in this case I chose GoPro Studio. Um, pretty much all the video editing software out there has some kind of color correction. And the reason I used GoPro Studio was because I found it easier than some of the other software that I use. Um, it was just a little bit more intuitive to me. Um, probably if you are a little bit more gifted at color correction than the other software um, would be fine for you. I'm not going to show you in GoPro Studio what I do to color correct my video clips. Just to get you oriented on where I'm at, I've already gone through and viewed and trimmed my clips. And I'm now in step two. I've taken the clips and actually drug them into my timeline so they're ready for editing. The, just a quick note on the clips themselves. They're just standard clips. I did not use Protune. Um, and they are just like 1920 by 1080 or 1920 by 1440. All right, so a few of the things I'm going to cover uh, is an overview. I'm going to go into splitting the clip so you can see kind of before and after what the color correction looks like. We're going to go through presetting or presets using Protune. We're going to cover temperature and tint changes, copy and paste settings, resetting all the properties for a clip, and I'm going to talk a little bit about reasons that you should or shouldn't um, color correct a clip before you split it up. And then finally I'm going to go through how to guard against GoPro Studio crashing, which does happen to me. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to go through is splitting the clip so you can see the before and after. So on the right side here, it may be that there's a line that you have to pull down to see this option, but there's an option here for split point. It allows you to see the color correction before and after. So what you can do is drag that over about halfway, and you won't see any changes now because we haven't done any color correction. Um, but what it'll allow you to do is actually see what that looks like. Uh, one thing to note, before you actually export your video, you want to move that split point back over, otherwise you will export your clip with that split in the middle. Okay, so that's the split point. The next thing I'm going to go through are some of the preset options. So one item that I will do for my underwater snorkeling videos is I will go down to the presets here and I will select Protune. And what that will do is add a little bit of um, clarity, I guess I would call it, to uh, the clip um, just by doing that itself. It, to me it makes it a little bit sharper. We still need to do a little bit of color correction to it, but I already noticed a big difference just by selecting that option. You can go back and change it to none if you want, and you can do the next part with changing the temperature and tint without having clicked Protune. Uh, but I like to go into in the presets and select Protune. Okay, the third option is, is going into the white balance section and changing the temp and tint. And this is really where you'll make a big difference in the color of the clip. You'll notice here that I've got some subjects in my foreground and some in the background, so I can kind of see what's happening 
uh, within the clip, not only in the close-up part, but also in the distance. Um, so I found this tip online, and I believe it was Freediver HD um, that I found this on. Uh, but basically what you do for your underwater footage is you can move the temp far to the right and move the tent far to the left. And now it doesn't look great right now, but what I usually start out with is moving temperature to the right and tent to the left, and then I start making smaller adjustments until it looks like I saw it whenever I was actually doing the snorkeling underwater. Um, so just kind of keep playing around until you find your happy spot. And I'm not going to make this perfect uh, for the purposes of this video, uh, but that's that's pretty close. Um, so again, here on the left, you can see the before, and on the right, you can see the after. And that's pretty much it for changing um, the, the coloring. Um, again, you can go down a little bit further and change some of these other options, including exposure, contrast, saturation. And I do recommend that you, um, you know, play around with these a little bit, but it isn't necessary that you do it for each clip, but it will add some lighting and some differences in some of the other clips that you have. Okay, so let's go to the next clip that I have here, and we'll do that same process again. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to click on the ProTune, and then I'm going to go to the white balance section, drag that to the right, the tent I'm going to drag to the left, and I'm going to do a little bit of micro turn tuning here. I need a little bit more to the right there. You can kind of drag and see how that looks. Okay. For the purposes of this video, I'd say that looks pretty good. All right, we're going to go to this one now and uh, do the same thing. Click on Pro Tune. You can already see things are different. I'm going to drag things to the right and the tent to the left. And maybe back. No, that looks pretty good. Uh, again, I would kind of go through the clip and actually look at it from a few different points and uh, make sure everything looks looks good in there. Really what I'm trying to do is just really make it look like what I recall seeing. Um, so it's not a science, it's a little bit of an art. And, oh, yeah, we already clicked ProTune. Okay. So that's really going through the white balance uh, temperature and tint settings and how I do that and selecting ProTune. Now one of the things I'll mention is that I had already split this clip with this turtle on it um, into this one. And one technique that you can do to make your color correction a little bit quicker is you can go into the, the clip that you've already done the color correction to and if the one that you want to apply the color correction to is a similar, maybe it's the same clip or it's a similar lighting or depth, one thing you can do is right click on the bottom left of the clip and, click, and select copy. And you can select this other one and select paste. And then if we bring that back up, you can see that it's applied all the properties that we've selected for this other clip to this one. So therefore, if you've got some footage that is similar, um, again in color and depth and lighting um, it's a quick way to go through and do some color correction. Alright the next thing that I will show you is that if you get your clip in such a way that you just don't like the settings and you want to return it back to its default you can go down here in the bottom right and select the reset all option. Are you, want to, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. And what you'll see here is it's reset everything and what that will allow you to do is if you just want to start from scratch again and uh, reapply your color correction, you can go ahead and do that. Now for this demo, I'm going to go back and do copy. And I'm going to do paste. And once again, we have that back in there. Okay, so um, you'll notice that this clip, what I did was I created a split and I showed you how to copy and paste it. Now one of the things that I could have done is as opposed to splitting the clip I could have left it one long clip and applied my color correction to that clip and then split it afterwards. And that would have saved me the step of doing the copy and paste because I would have applied the color correction to the entire long clip and then did the splitting and that would have saved my um, color correction on there. So that's one reason to think about when you actually do your splits, if you do it before you do the color correction or after. Another thing though is that your clip may include different lighting. You may go from a, uh, 
a, a deeper dive uh, up to the surface. And so you may need to split that clip because you're going to apply different color correction to that clip. Um, so in that case, it may make sense to actually split it and then do color correction to each of the different segments. Okay, let me show you here real quick as well now something that's out of water. Um, so I also do some color correction uh, uh, for my footage out of water. It's just a little bit different, so I can go through and hit ProTune, and you'll see quite a noticeable difference here already. And one thing that you can do in the white balance, uh, since we're not underwater, you don't want to just move things to the right and then the tent to the left. Um, so you can adjust things. You can do little micro adjustments if you like. Um, or you can select this white balance option. And basically what that allows you to do is you click on this pick option. If you have something that you know is white, you can then move it over that and then select something in that picture that is white. And I don't really like what that did to my my color correction. And so you may try a few different um, options here as far as different colors or different places to click on the thing that's white. Um, or again, you can just actually change it based on what your eye sees uh, until you get it to be what you want it to. All right, now the last thing I want to show you is, um, you know, once you export that, uh, you're pretty well good. As I mentioned before, just change the split point back so that uh, it does not have that line down the middle. Um, but the last thing you want to kind of guard against as you're doing this is GoPro Studio, for me at least, still seems to crash on occasion. Um, and there's nothing worse than doing a clip, putting a lot of time in color correction, and then you lose those changes. Um, so what I will do is I'm going through, I will actually come down to this, I'll select File, and then Save Project As, and then I will call it uh, like Color Correction, and then make it number two. Okay, I'll go then through and make a bunch of changes. Maybe 10 minutes later, I'll come in and do a save project. And then what I might do is call it uh, color correction number three. And so on and so forth. And I might have 10 of those um, during the time that I make this actual video. And what that allows me to do is if something happens to my overall project where I'm not able to recover from that specific project, then what I can do is go back and do an open project and I can go back to the last one that worked. Now a lot of other software programs are more mature and they don't have that problem, but GoPro Studio is still fairly new and I have experienced some crashes, so I do want to show you what I do to actually guard against those crashes. Okay, well that's it and I hope that helps and I hope that your, uh, your video turns out great of your vacation and your snorkeling and uh, drop me a comment down below if you found this helpful. Thanks.